war, pilots and helicopter crews have to prepare for every possible scenario. And while no one in the Army ever wants to experience an over-the-water crash, four rocker soldiers take that plunge each and every day, just as if it were the real thing. News Force Patrick Claybon joins us now for the first installment of his special series, Tactics in Training. Patrick? Well, Skylar Ridge, as someone who stinks straight to the bottom, it was quite a sight to see soldiers in full gear being dumped into water with little to no visibility, upside down, and watch them find their way out. All for the sake of training. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, a statistic that makes it necessary for helicopter crew members to become well acquainted with the substance time after time after time, making sure they're comfortable in the water. There's a difference between water comfortability and swimming skills because we have a lot of people that are swim champs, college swim team, but it's a total different environment when you put on the tactical gear that the Army provides. The Helicopter Overwater Survival Training Program, or HOST, puts trainees through classroom scenarios. How to find your way out if you can't see, what to do if the doors are jammed, but overall the one solid message, don't panic. When you come into it, you know, you are a little apprehensive from the get-go, but, I mean, they teach you everything you need to know, and they make you feel real comfortable once you're actually in the water. Lieutenant Walters has done all of his HOST training, except for one part. He has yet to take a ride in the Hewitt. It's a mock cockpit and fuselage designed overseas specifically for training here in the U.S., where contractors, many with Navy backgrounds, work hand-in-hand -hand with Army officials to ensure everything's done correctly. The Marines are doing it. The, the Army's doing it. Anybody who goes over water, there is a possibility that it can happen. And if they come to us and they get the training that they're supposed to have, they can get out, they can come home. That brings us back to the Hewitt, as first-timers look on at the thing that will dunk and spin them as if they're going through the wash cycle. This time, though, there are lifeguards and divers on standby, a luxury not available in the real thing. They're in, then they spin, and while it's chaos on the outside, the underwater camera reveals the calmness the training is instilled. Find the reference points, move, and swim. Lieutenant Walters left his first ride looking at the Hewitt in a different light. How'd you feel about it? That was fun. Yeah. It's like going on a roller coaster, but underwater. <laughs> and while success is always fun, trainers say the real reward comes when someone's able to come home because of the training. But when someone comes back and tells you physically the impact that was made and the fact that, they, that your life was saved because of what you told them and they trusted you and then they actually had to put it to an application and it worked. I mean, you know, that makes all the difference in the world. And guys, there was a time when this training was only offered by the Navy, explaining why so many of the instructors have a naval background, but they don't mind working to train Army personnel because a life saved is just that. All right. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Now, tomorrow in part two of Training Tactics, we get a look at a flight simulator that has crews navigating almost the entire country of Iraq. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. And I tell you what, a lot